folks oh, you again, you can push me out of the way. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to say a few words and then um, make sure you go up here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, say a few words, and we have uh, uh, several of these fine attorneys uh, behind me uh, say a few words. Uh, but <clears throat> the, the top line here is that uh, Mr. Uh, what is, yeah, the top line here is that uh, Mr. Woodward has already filed the appeal uh, in this case. This is a case of first impressions that I have said from day one is destined for the Supreme Court. It is a case that really asks the important question of whether a senior White House aide and alter ego of the president can be compelled to testify by Congress, and this is where we're at. Unfortunately, um, the opposition behind us won't let this be heard, but we're going to do our best here. Uh, the one thing I would say before we, um, before I turn it over to Mr. Brand, uh, defendpeter.com, defendpeter.com. Uh, this case is costing already almost a million dollars. I'm going to need your support, folks, for the appeal to FenPeter.com. So, uh, Mr. Brand? Yeah, well, uh, I would just say um, this case is now teed up for the Court of Appeals. Um, Judge Maida himself recognized this was a serious constitutional issue. For the first time in history, he held an evidentiary hearing on whether the privilege was properly invoked. While we disagree with him, we think there is a serious question here that the Court of Appeals will resolve maybe the Supreme Court, uh, and that's something that we will uh, we will pursue. How much is the fine? This case is ninety five hundred dollars. Uh, Mr. Irving, please. Harry Dunn for Congress. Harry Dunn for Congress. Oh, Harry Dunn for Congress. Are we done? Oh, go ahead. No, I just want to just want to read it right because it's an important constitutional issue. We've okay, always understood okay. that this case was going to have to be resolved at the D.C. Circuit. We've already noted our appeal. And we look forward to the opportunity to talk to the D.C. Circuit. So, um, look, I'd be happy to talk to some of the, uh, the print media inside so that we're not harassed by uh, these folks here. But again, the, the important issue here is the central constitutional issue about the separation of powers and the integrity of presidential decision making. And I have been caught in a battle between two competing branches of government, and um, this is this is uh, we're, we're about halfway to resolving this case. So I appreciate this. Um, I'm sorry for the video cameras that you can't get clean sound because of this, but but this is what this is what has happened to this country. And it's, it's unfortunate that they won't respect my First Amendment uh, rights here. DefendPeter.com, please, please put that out on your stations. Uh, and um, I'll to walk in. Can we give it a shot? Do what? Can we try to ask a question? Uh, not really, we're because. All, we're all here. And we, and, and well, the, the problem uh, is. Uh, no, the microphones are picking you up fine. Don't worry. The the oh, it is picking up fine? All right. Um, I'm going to uh, hey, let hey, my hey, colleagues. This all right, so, I yes, sir. The question you have is, is sure. it speaks for itself. Are you expecting or hoping for a pardon from Donald Trump in 2025? No, I'm not expecting or hoping for that. That's not an issue. I do believe President Trump will win the White House in 2025. But what's important to me, sir, and it's always been important to me, is the underlying constitutional issue associated with that. I would say that that my 
us standing up on this matter, uh, we've already achieved an important victory. The Department of Justice attorneys, after pressure from not just from my defense team, but also from the judge himself, finally acknowledged, finally acknowledged that senior presidential advisors, such as myself, cannot be compelled to testify. They have acknowledged that they would not prosecute in that case. So there's a there's very much a constitutional disconnect here. So the important mission here is to settle good law in an area where there is nothing now but mostly a vacuum. Remember, please, <laughs> I am the first person ever charged with this crime in the history of the Republic, the first senior White House executive ever charged, ever charged, and, and what my defense team has beautifully done in cooperation with the court has set up a roadmap for all future prosecutions. As I said, in the courtroom today, I am not only just the first person who's ever been charged with this, I will be the last person because of the roadmap we have established. Hey, Peter. So, yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, yeah. If these commies behind us are going to keep on banging around so you can't have a straight thought or be able to answer a question I'm fine. with some thoughts, these cameras actually go ahead and these cameras actually pick it up. I'll take it. I, I have no comment. I mean, it's, it's, the, this issue is simply about the constitutional separation of powers, executive privilege, and the integrity of presidential decision making. And this is a principle that goes back to the days of George Washington. So anyway, write your stories well. I appreciate it. Uh, I've got a big fight ahead of me. I've got great, great folks behind me. DefendPeter.com. Please, DefendPeter.com. Help me raise the money in order to fight this battle. Thank you. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll save that one for for uh, arguing in the the appeal. I'm not I'm not going to get into the uh, the minutia of that here. Anyway, um, thanks for coming out. We're, at least we had some decent weather here, and um, I uh, unfortunately we'll see you again. Bye.